And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everybody, Ryan Metzler here again, and we're taking a look at Days of Steam today. This is a game by Valley Games, and as you can probably tell, uh, it's a train theme game. And this one is going to be more of a pick up and deliver than, you know, your typical train games. You're going to be trying to move cubes from one spot to another. Uh, most effectively, most efficiently, and, and importantly, faster than your opponents. Uh, the entire goal is to move a certain amount of cubes in order to get a certain amount of points. And you do so by laying tiles, uh, moving your train around, and generally just kind of picking things up and dropping them off. That said, why don't we take a look at what's in the box and how the game plays. So you'll notice the first thing you get in the box is all kinds of tiles. And as I said, this is a tile laying game. So uh, if you pick up some of these tiles, you'll first see that you have four train tiles. And as this is a four player game, uh, these train tiles are going to allow you to keep track of how much steam you have, how much movement you have. Uh, and they're basically just little markers. And you'll have cubes that go on here and you'll keep track of how far you can move each turn by moving up on these tracks. Uh, so these are just little individual player tiles. Next, what you'll see is you have a bunch of tiles with what looks like buildings on them, and there's a four-way crossroads on all of them. There's, there's 12 of these, and these are going to be your, uh, your town tiles where you're actually trying to deliver goods. Now, here you can see that there are only red and yellow town tiles, but you'll see if I add more, there's blue and green, uh, and there's all different kinds. So you're trying to deliver goods to these towns. And so what you'll be doing is picking up a good in one town. Let's say pick up a green good in this town here and you're going to try and move it to a green matching town and drop it off, and that'll earn you points. In addition to town tiles, you're going to get lots and lots of track tiles, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. So you'll have straight tracks, you'll have straight tracks that go over, or over hills, uh, you'll have curving tracks and, and overlapping tracks, and all different kinds of tracks. And you're going to be using these each turn, you'll, be, you'll have the option of playing a tile in order to extend track. Now, there are several different options. You're trying to either connect towns so that you can move between them and build, build, or, uh, deliver goods, or there are certain points for creating circuits, which are actual areas between two towns from which you can go to one town to another town and back without ever going over the same piece of track. So this is pretty much all of the tiles inclu included in the game. You'll see there's a, there's a lot of them, uh, and they're all different kinds. Uh, and some of them will have different features. You know, this one has a water tower on it, which is integral to gameplay. Uh, some of them have a little icon in the corner that says you can play it over another tile, uh, which you can do as long as you maintain all of the current tracks. Uh, there's just all kinds of features on these, but for the most part, they're pretty straightforward. They're going to allow you to move from one place to another, uh, you know, going over these tracks in one direction. In addition to all of that, you're going to get a nice uh, velvety bag here for drawing cubes out of. Uh, and then you're going to get a bunch of cubes uh, and trains and such. So the trains are the player markers, and you're going to be moving these around, collecting goods and delivering them. Uh, you have these little white discs, which are actually uh, point scores for creating circuits, which, as I said, is building or finishing a track between two cities, which allows you to go from one city to the other and back without ever going doubling over the same piece of track. There are seven of these worth one point each, so the first seven circuits will allow you to get a point. There are these coal cubes, which only come into play towards the end of the game when all of the towns have been placed on the board. And these are just going to allow you to get extra steam in order to move your train further. So as I said earlier, these indicators are your amount of steam, and as you gain steam, it'll go up, and you gain steam by using, using yeah, either using these cubes or by placing tiles. Finally, you have all these colored cubes over here, and these colored cubes are going to be the goods that you are trying to transport. So you'll see they come in the four colors that I showed you were available in towns earlier, green, blue, red, and yellow. And these will be placed randomly on towns as they come into play, and will be available for players to pick up and move. I uh, guess finally, now we have this die, and the die is uh, simply a, a type of governor which is going to prevent you from moving too fast with your train. Uh, movement is always allow or allowed up to six movement per turn based on how much steam you have and how much you would like to use, but any time you move over two steam in one turn and go around a curve, you're going to have to roll this die. Now, you're going to take the number of spaces you moved, so for example if I moved three spaces, and subtract two from that number. You need to roll higher than the resulting number in order to stay on the track. So for example, if I moved three spaces and around a turn, I would need to roll minus two, which is a one, anything higher than a one is going to be safe. So I rolled a die, and I rolled a one, which is actually very typical of my luck. I would fall off 
lose any goods I was carrying, lose all of the steam I used, and go back to the position where I started. So on a player's turn, they have three real options of what to do. The first is going to be to play a tile, and each player will have a hand of three tiles uh, at all times, which they can choose from in order to play. So you'll see I may have, you know, this straight piece, or I may have a curved piece, or maybe another straight piece, but this one has a water tower on it. Uh, and I can choose to play this so that I, it always traces back to at least one town. So we can see if I place this piece, I can trace back in a connection to this town here. No problem. Uh, the second option on a turn, oh, sorry. Uh, when you play a tile, you're going to get steam equal to the number in the top right-hand corner of the tile. So you can see here, I would get one steam. So if I was the gray player here, uh, I would move my track from zero to one, and now I would have one steam for use in moving on a future turn. Additionally, there are also always town time tiles available that you can play, and these town tiles, when they come out, are going to have random goods placed on them. So you'll see here that there are two town tiles available for play. There's a red town with a green and a blue cube, and a yellow town with a yellow and a green cube. And I could choose, instead of playing a tile from my hand, to play one of these. However, there are stipulations. They must always be at least uh, three tiles away from the closest town tile, so there must be two tracks in between. Uh, and you always have to be able to trace a track between one town and another town. Placing one of these will not allow you to draw a new tile, but a new town tile would come into play in its place, available for play, and two random goods would come onto it. When all the town tiles are in play, the game is close to ending, and players will get those coal cubes that I talked about earlier that will allow them to be used for extra steam at the beginning of their turn. The second option on one's turn is to move, and moving requires steam. So as I showed you earlier, when you play tiles, you can get more steam. And so now White has one steam because he's played this tile. And let's say it's his turn. So White's going to choose to move one space. Moving one space requires one steam, so he's going to move. And he's going to reduce his steam total. Moving past other trains would require extra steam, and you can never stop on the same spot as another train. So even though one might have or White might have one steam here, he can't move to this spot because he would stop on the same spot. Now, if another tile were past that, it would require he would require three steam to get to that tile because it costs an extra steam to move past this train and for a third steam to get to that final tile. Certain features allow you to take special actions, and the third action is actually to fill up your water tower, or fill up your train from a water tower, which is going to give you a bunch of steam. And in order to do this, you have to have stopped on that tile on the previous turn. What you can do then is forgo your entire turn in order to use the water tower and gain four steam. Now the goal is to transfer goods from one city to another. So let's say there's a city there, and there's a city here. And this player is traveling through the first city and wants to pick up this green good. Anytime you're traveling through a city, you can pick up a good, no problem. Then, in order to deliver that good, the player has to pass through a town of the same color, delivering the cube, and for each cube you deliver, you get two points. The first player to 13 points is the winner of the game, and at that point, uh, you stop immediately. So it's either the game's either going to end one player gets to 13 points, or the entire pile of... Uh, of tiles has been exhausted and put into play. So that's Days of Steam. Uh, pretty simple little game, a nice pick up and deliver. I have to admit, I'm not real fond of it. And now that's not the game's fault. I think it's a decent enough game, but I have terrible, terrible luck with dice. So as I said, there's that governor on going too fast around tracks, and I've, I've played the game uh, three or four times now, and every time I have gone above a speed of three and gone around a curve, I have rolled a one and fallen off. Now, that didn't stop me from winning the game the first time that I played. I actually fell off the track twice in the game that I played first, uh, and then decided that it was no longer worth my trouble to try and go faster than three. Uh, I still won. Uh, I just had to be a little more careful about my planning, a little more... A little more uh, slow and steady wins the race type of style of play. Uh, I think the game is fun, it's a little simple for me, for me, but for people who like Carcassonne, or for people who really like Pick Up and Deliver, it kind of puts those elements together into a game uh, that's very entry level in terms of, uh, you know, a, a nice Pick Up and Deliver train game style of Steam or Age of Steam. So if you're looking for something to get into that genre, uh, you've played Carcassonne, uh, maybe you're a little bit of a lighter gamer, Take a look at Days of Steam. If you're looking for something more advanced, uh, a real good pick up and deliver, I would suggest you look at the Steam or Age of Steam titles uh, to get what you're looking for. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, 
audio and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Bye.